Um, actually, this is the this is the first time that uh, that we are in Cristalera with a presentation instead of a workshop that we do together. So it's, it's quite a strange situation for us. Uh, but actually, we chose to do this because because we are talking about this title, which is. Digital solutions for analog people, <laughs> because that's what we lived mainly last year. As I was talking about it earlier in in, in the morning, that this was the biggest challenge to understand how we can move towards digital and how to how we can maintain and keep the analog part of it and discover the possibilities of the mixture of these things. Hola a todo el mundo. Es la primera vez que estamos aquí en la cristalera eh, haciendo una presentación en vez de eh, realizando un taller. Mm, es una situación un poco extraña. Pero bueno, eh, el título que veis aquí eh, son eh, Digital Solutions for Analog People, soluciones digitales para personas eh, análogas. Eh, el mayor reto que hemos tenido ha sido hacer la transición eh, de lo digital y seguir manteniendo la parte análoga con las personas y eh, queremos descubrir las posibilidades que ambas ofrecen. Sí. Y soy Andor Timar. Originally started the news project in 1995 uh, as an artist. And then I became uh, the, the, the leader of the news, the news Hungary's project. And this is Lenny Salacis. Hello, I joined the news in 2020, so not the same as <laughs> we under. And I work on an international project. Yes. My name is Timar. Which is fruit in Arabic language, by the way. Yo soy Tima. En 1995 empecé a trabajar en este proyecto como artista. Después me convertí en el líder del proyecto en Hungría. Y por cierto, mi nombre significa verdad en árabe. Y yo me uní en 2020. So um, let's let's talk about this challenge we had we had all uh, last year basically because we faced the same situation in uh, in, in our countries with, with the news with all the lockdown situations and and with the idea whether to continue or to stop that that was basically the main question as I mentioned uh, this morning and and after a two weeks period of time. Uh, in March last year, we decided that the only single choice, even if we believe that news is a really analog thing, it's something that has to happen in the classroom with the contact with the children, even if this is the case, we definitely would like to continue somehow and discover this new realm of the digital space. Hoy quisiera hablaros del desafío que tenemos por delante. Todos hemos vivido la misma situación, hemos tenido las mismas restricciones, hemos sufrido el confinamiento y la idea que se nos presenta ahora mismo es ¿continuamos o paramos con eh, lo digital? Eh, el año pasado, en marzo, eh, nos empezamos a plantear este asunto. Eh, Aunque creamos que MUSE debe desarrollarse solo de manera presencial, ahora sí que creemos y queremos eh, continuar descubriendo las posibilidades que nos ofrece este espacio digital. Yes. Uh, so let's focus on the key questions that we had to understand and we had to study. And let's jump back to uh, 2020 uh, that we all experienced. Uh, Okay, schools are closed, so we have to find a new way of communication. Uh, 
we live in physical isolation, which means that, that we cannot have this kind of contact that we had that, that we had so far. And uh, we also have to make a, a, a shift, a very quick shift in the school system to the digital learning platforms, which, uh, which was a great challenge also for the schools and for the teachers. And last but not, state, uh, not, last but not least, we have to understand and study a little bit how the state of the mind and state of the body changes, with, uh, especially for children being at home and trying to learn from home. So these were the, the four main questions or areas that we had to address when we said we want to continue. Las preguntas clave que nos tenemos que hacer hoy, eh, os las voy a enumerar en un momento. Eh, volviendo a la vista atrás, a que me pasó año 2020, eh, en el momento en el que todas las escuelas cerraron, eh, nos vimos forzados a buscar nuevas maneras de seguir eh, llegando a los alumnos. Vivimos una, un aislamiento físico. Eh, con lo cual no hemos podido tener el contacto de antes. Eh, con lo cual lo que hemos vivido ha sido un pequeño cambio en el sistema que siguen los colegios, en las plataformas que han usado online. Eh, con lo cual eh, eh, me gustaría decir que, que eh, tenemos que tener en cuenta el estado mental y físico que experimentan los niños cuando aprenden desde casa. So first, I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, the solutions we had for the children, and 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 that was the first step we we really had to address and, and react on, and and then uh, what are the conclusions that led us towards how we can use this in the adult education. So so that that's why I'm going back for, for as a starting point. For the, 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 what we did with the children, in order to understand how it helped us uh, uh, to develop something which is adult education, which is capacitar. So, translation and. En primer lugar, me gustaría abordar la solución que hemos aplicado con los niños. Este es el primer paso, porque la conclusión es que. Todo lo que hemos aprendido se puede usar en la educación también para adultos, eh, que nos lleva al proyecto capacitarte. Okay, so let's see the objectives that we we had in mind, and we thought that it should be and and, and definitely are important to to follow. Uh, first of all, okay, decision. Let's keep going and let's keep, let's continue uh, uh, the activities. What we what we've been doing for the last twenty five seven years. Uh, definitely, somehow we have to create a connection. We have to stay in touch with the kids, and and we have to produce things that they are interested in, and they can interact with. So that that was very important, uh, and that's the, that's the next point that that. We have to create something that, that that we can do together with them, and they can they can also be active in their homes. And last but not least, we can strengthen the community of the of the classes, and we can strengthen also the community of the music artists and the connection uh, with the schools. So these were these were the objectives when we decided that we want to go forward. Los objetivos en los que nos basamos para querer continuar eh, consideramos que son bastante importantes. En primer lugar, nuestro objetivo es seguir haciéndolo. Eh, seguir haciendo las mismas actividades que se han hecho en los últimos 25 o 27 años. Eh, también seguir en contacto con los niños eh, y al mismo tiempo creando eh, actividades que les despierten el interés y con, los que, con las que puedan eh, seguir siendo activos incluso desde casa. Eh, por último, pero no menos importante, eh, nuestro objetivo también es crear una comunidad fuerte. Especialmente respondiendo al hecho de que estamos isolados, que estamos separados en el espacio. Ok, so let's see the answers, the, the solutions we had. I don't want to go too much in details, but mainly I would like to focus on the conclusions, what we what we realized at the end. Uh, but I can I can give you also the facts, what we what we did, and what what are what are the solutions that we 
that we came to. First of all, here you can see that, that this is our YouTube channel because we discovered that we, we can communicate the best way through the YouTube channel. What's happening? Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. <laughs> So, so this is our uh, this is our YouTube channel. That is the main main channel to communicate, and obviously we also use uh, the social media uh, channels and platforms we we, we we wanted to use and apply to to be in touch. Um, but but YouTube YouTube channel was the was the most important thing uh, because we started to create content for the kids on the on the, on the YouTube channel. So our solutions was that we decided very quickly, in two weeks' time, in March, that we already knew that the, uh, that the schools don't open until the end of the year. So we, we made a time schedule and we realized that we have the opportunity to produce 28 episodes of art activities, uh, which is 14 episodes for the smaller ones, like grade 1 and 2 and 14 episodes for the higher levels for grade 3 and 4. We have four, four grades in, in, in Hungary, in the elementary school, the primary school. So, so we produced uh, 28 episodes, and, uh, and also we understood that the teachers needed a lot of support from us, and this was an opportunity, again, to prove and to show them that, uh, that art and the artists can be a very active and very important part in the digital learning uh, process because, because basically this is completely new for the kids and, and using arts or using examples uh, for the teachers it was extremely helpful to support all the materials they wanted to show to the kids. Uh, can I go further or you want to? Can I go? Okay. Uh, and. Um, then, as a consequence, we realized that it was really useful, but also uh, we also had to understand that there were some problems with this, with this system. There were some risks and challenges. So we had to improve and, and make a better version in it. And with the help of Nerissa, we applied for several uh, calls and, and opportunities. So, so we made an advanced edition in 2021, so this year. Uh, which is even more interactive and even more supporting the participation of the kids. And last but not least, uh, we realized that it's an incredibly good tool, I mean the digital space, to make online training courses for the artists, for the uh, news artists. And we are going to cover that as the main element of Capacitate. And, uh, and, and, and this is the second part of our presentation that we're going to talk about. Maybe it's a lot of it. I have just one question. Yes. You talk about educational levels in Hungary. Sorry? How, when you talk about educational levels in yes. Hungary, how old are children, for example, in first, second, third, and fourth grade? We start at the age of six and we finish the age of ten. So we have four grades. Okay. In the primary. Eh, nuestras soluciones han sido varias. En primer lugar, tenemos el, el, un canal en YouTube. Ha sido el principal y la principal forma de llegar a los niños, aunque también en, nos hemos valido de redes sociales y otras plataformas. Eh, pero sí que ha sido la principal y la más importante. Ahí es donde hemos podido crear contenido para los niños. Y, Claro, cuando eh, estábamos en marzo de 2020 y nos dijeron las, los colegios van a cerrar y probablemente estén cerrados todo el año, eh, pues nosotros empezamos a producir eh, episodios. Hemos tenido un total de 28 eh, que se dividen según la edad de los niños. En Hungría, eh, la escuela primaria eh, comienza, eh, tiene cuatro niveles, por así decirlo, empezando cuando los niños tienen 6 años y, y salen con 10 años. Entonces, para el primer y segundo año, que sería equivalente a cuando los niños tienen 6-7 años, eh, teníamos estos 14 primeros episodios. Y los 14 restantes eh, eran para los niños de tercer y cuarto año, con 7 eh, eh, 
is it uh, the second, uh, the last fourteen uh, episodes for when the kids? Actually, come? the fourteen for the smaller ones, yeah. uh, uh, grade one and two, mm -hmm. and fourteen for the uh, older ones, grade mm -hmm. three and four. Bueno, simplificándolo, eh, los 14 primeros episodios para los alumnos más jóvenes y los 14 últimos para los alumnos de los últimos años. Eh, eh, nos dimos cuenta también de que los profesores necesitaban nuestra ayuda, así que eh, toda, eh, todo este esfuerzo, este esfuerzo ha sido una buena manera de involucrar también a los artistas. Eh, recordemos que... Estas, este método es muy novedoso para los niños, el verse eh, aprendiendo desde casa y también les ha ayudado eh, en su educación. ¿Cuál es la consecuencia? Que, eh, bueno, eh, nos hemos dado cuenta de que sí que era útil, pero al mismo tiempo surgían problemas, conllevaba sus riesgos, era un gran desafío, con lo cual hemos tenido que irla desarrollando eh, y introducir mejoras. Por eso Melissa nos ha ayudado eh, a crear una versión avanzada para este año 2021. Esta versión es mucho más interactiva para los niños. Eh, también nos hemos dado cuenta que este espacio digital es una fantástica herramienta para que los artistas puedan eh, participar en las clases. Y este es uno de los elementos principales eh, de los que voy a hablar en la segunda parte que está relacionado con capacitarte. What may be important here, and I left out one of the one of the uh, uh, bullet points, is that it's not really in chronological order, uh, almost. Uh, the first thing, what? Okay, I, I, I have to learn that I, I shouldn't I shouldn't push this button. <laughs> so, uh, so these were the two step, uh, uh, the first two steps that we made uh, in in the springtime of last year. And then we realized that we have to prepare the artists accordingly because we were absolutely uncertain how, how the, the 2020 and 2021 uh, school year is going to happen. So we realized that we already have to have this idea of, of the Capacitat uh, uh, program and the framework and we have to prepare the artists for a very challenging and very uncertain year for, for 20 and 21. And then once we, we had this training, we started to feel uh, uh, certain uh, that it's a good approach. And that's when we started to develop this advanced edition for 21, whatever comes, because we, we didn't know how much we can spend in the classroom and how much we can uh, learn online. And then the last step was that, okay, we can use this also for the, for the artists to prepare. It's just, it was just an adjustment of the, of the order. So mm -hmm. first these two, then we prepared the artists uh, in, in the autumn, then we applied and started to develop this one, and finally we arrived to the online training sessions for the artists. Me gustaría hacer una corrección porque la verdad es que no he seguido un orden cronológico, más o menos, por así decirlo. Eh, los dos primeros puntos sí que eh, se desarrollaron en la primavera de 2020, eh, en el momento en el que tuvimos que preparar a los artistas por, eh, para enfrentar la incertidumbre que tendríamos el resto del 2020 y este 2021. Eh, después eh, vino... Eh, so, so we, first, we prepared the artists in last September, and then we started to work on this, the advanced edition. Antes de, de entrar a mejorar la edición avanzada, eh, en otoño eh, pasamos a la fase de preparar a los artistas. Okay. So, uh, I just want to give you a teaser, just a taste of it, how it looked like, and maybe already from the starting picture you can see uh, what was important, because th this, this is the starting frame of one of the videos we produced last uh, spring. But what is what we definitely realized, that it has to be attractive and interesting for the first sight. So that's why we have to have a very strong picture. <laughs> the, uh, that usually the artists are the strange guys doing very weird things with their faces and, and, and hands. Uh, we also uh, understood that it has to be something friendly and, and focusing on the kids which is familiar with, with, with that kind of uh, illustrations or with the dynamics. 
and, uh, and you have to have a very clear artistic title, which means that lion in the garden, in this case. And I'm going to show you a small extract after the translation. Simplemente os voy a dar unas pinceladas de, de, de lo que comentaba antes. Eh, este ha sido el marco en el que nos hemos basado para comenzar. Eh, nos dimos cuenta de que lo que producíamos tenía que ser atractivo para los niños. Teníamos que eh, ofrecer una imagen bastante llamativa y normalmente pues, vemos ahí al artista que solo es una persona extraña haciendo cosas extrañas, pero al mismo tiempo también tiene que ser... Eh, tiene que hacerse de una manera muy amigable. Eh, también necesitamos un título llamativo y, y artístico al mismo tiempo. En este caso, eh, el título que vemos ahí escrito en húngaro pues, significaría el león en el jardín. Y okay. os show you a uh, small extract from that. Uh, and maybe to the end of Yes. We also designed that. Uh, okay, I'll explain later. Sziasztok! Betty vagyok. Hi, I'm Betty. Most a bivar közösen mostunk nektek ezt az.
Most egy ide is eltozunk Indiába, amúgy az egész barátaim lesznek a lo más importante no, no es solo que fuera atractivo sino que pudiéramos o llegáramos a crear algo que pudieran hacer practicar y eh, disfrutar y después eh, ellos eh, acabaron mandando los vídeos y a cambio nosotros le, le dimos cierto reconocimiento y así es como conseguimos que se involucraran so, let's see what we learned from it. Exactly. We're going to show you another video soon, but I just wanted to highlight some points that we developed from the first part that we did from the, the previous video of the Blue Man video show that we learned throughout the year of the pandemic and how we can develop this, uh, this idea into a more advanced edition. So the first point was that even in the, in the video that we just saw, we saw two artists collaborating together. And in the advanced edition, we took this collaboration even a step further. So we made it kind of a, a series of episodes. And so the artist, uh, each artist prepared a video individually, but each of the videos were, was connected, kind of like a series that you would you know, watch on Netflix or something. So the first artist worked together with the second artist to make a good cohesion. The second artist worked together with the first one and the third one in a kind of like a chain reaction. So that made it more consistent for the children and also for the artists to do some co-creation processes together. That's the first point. Ahora en un segundo video vamos a mostrar lo que hemos aprendido. Eh, aunque sí que me gustaría recalcar algo que sí que hemos visto en el primer video, eh, esa colaboración entre las pistas. En la versión avanzada lo hemos llevado un poquito más lejos porque eh, quisimos que cada uno preparara vídeos individuales y que además estuvieran, tuvieran coherencia, que, fueran como una, que tuvieran continuidad, como si fuera una serie de Netflix. Y así lograrían eh, crear como una reacción, eh, una cadena, ¿no? eh, con lo cual eh, para a los niños les resultaba bastante coherente. Thank you, perfect. And the second one was uh, regarding the content. So Andor also mentioned already in the beginning that we tried to move towards kind of like a blended uh, dynamic, you know, in the digital space, but also something physical, something hands-on. So the idea that we had for the second round of, of the, the video project was to involve a toolkit, like a physical toolkit for the children, in parallel with the videos. So what we did was that we collected and made a, a package of uh, many different objects, like 16 different objects, each one to be used in one video. And, and that way the kids feel more that it's more interactive. And we made sure that these objects were common household objects. So everybody could have access and, and do these videos, not only the kids that we gave the package to as part of the project. Um, yeah. En, en segundo lugar, en, recogiendo lo que mi compañero com, eh, comentaba al inicio, eh, queremos hacer una transición a, eh, en la que podamos aunar las dos partes, la digital y la análoga. 
Con lo cual, la idea en esta segunda ronda de vídeos era eh, proporcionar una especie de caja de herramientas a los niños eh, que fueran en paralelo con estos vídeos. Y quisimos también elegir eh, objetos, que por lo general eran unos 16, que fueran comunes, que se pudieran encontrarlos en casa, eh, y tuvieran acceso y pudieran usarlos por los vídeos. And along with that, we also thought how to make it more interactive. Because already in the first, uh, in the first series that we, that we presented, we uh, gave them some questions, asked them to return some drawings. And in this, uh, this new episode, or in this new series, we made different challenges for them to leave their home, go outside, and in their neighborhood to find the, the answers to the questions that we posed and also to, to send any videos, any drawings, just like that, to make it more interactive and to reward all of these feedbacks that we get from them. In the first series of videos, we had to ask a series of questions to the children, and in this new series of videos, we asked them to ask 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 them and the, the fourth point, and this is kind of not maybe that exciting part, but we did some uh, kind of video analytics to see what works and what doesn't. And uh, in the first part, in the first series, our, our videos tended to be quite long. And you can tell that the attention span of, of adults and even of children is very limited. So we realized that on Facebook, for example, a video, the, the average watch time is 12 seconds. And on YouTube, it's about two minutes. Uh, so we tried to adjust our, our new series to, to fit more the attention span of, of children and uh, also to make it um, more targeted at classrooms. So we worked together with the teachers to set a time that they can watch these videos in class, but we also broadcast them on social media to make it accessible for children who are not part of the music program. El cuarto punto a lo mejor no es tan interesante eh, porque hicimos una serie de eh, analíticas eh, sobre el vídeo para ver lo que ha funcionado y lo que no ha funcionado. Eh, sabemos que la atención es limitada, sobre todo los niños. Eh, en Facebook eh, tenemos una atención media de 12 segundos, mientras que viendo un vídeo de YouTube esa atención se expande a los dos minutos. Eh, con lo cual lo que hicimos fue ajustar estos vídeos para que concordaran con el nivel de atención de, de los niños. También eh, lo que hicimos fue eh, retransmitirlo de manera que los niños que no tuvieran acceso a estos vídeos pues, pudieran ver. Okay. I just was one last thing before we see the second video, let's say, which is a puppet artist and uh, you will see the signal or the intro. Mm -hmm. How how do you call it? Yeah, that? the intro. Yeah, the intro part. We have always the same uh, intro before each uh, episode, so they really get used to it. Ah, now we have to take the toolkit, and now we're looking for something new. <laughs> so it it has to be built up to let's say the strengthen the brand of the series, and and it immediately it catches them. Okay, now we are going to have a good. Lo último que quiero comentar, creo que lo vi de un artista que usaba marionetas. Él tenía, vais a ver que él va a dar como una especie de señal o una introducción. Y el caso es que es la misma introducción en todos los vídeos, de manera que los niños al ver eso, pues ya directamente, automáticamente piensan, ah, vale, ahora viene la parte en la que tenemos que buscar la caja de herramientas y ahora tenemos que empezar a encontrar cosas. Y eso refuerza eh, la, la cohesión y la efectividad de todos estos vídeos. Vamos a ver la, la parte de esta segunda edición. No es muy diferente, pero... <risa>
using the digital space to create activities for the children, we also thought it was really important to have a meeting finally all together with the national team of youth artists in Hungary. And this took place, this is an annual meeting that we hold every year as part of youth to prepare for the school year to, to have kind of a, a team building space. And it was especially important, sorry, it was especially important after being in lockdown starting from March throughout the whole summer of not seeing each other. And we use this space to, to kind of share and, and, and be together, just like how uh, we are here in Capacitarte and, and enjoying you know, the, the contact with each other and being able to socialize. It was a really empowering uh, weekend to finally be able to be with each other physically and, and to focus on, on what we need to do. Two things, I will give you a word in a second. One was to strengthen the resilience of, of artists to be able to face kind of a very uncertain school year coming where we didn't know if, if lockdown was going to happen, how we we're going to be able to implement these activities, and to, to kind of also inspire them and, and, and tweak their creativity. Uh, regarding the first point, Ando is going to speak more about this growth mindset approach that you might be familiar with in dealing with challenges, failures, and, and strengthening resilience. It was the team of artists, are the news artists that work in Hungary. Mm -hmm. Sí, el espacio digital es importante, pero eh, quisimos también complementarlo con un encuentro eh, con el equipo nacional de un día de, de, de artistas museos. Eh, tras eh, el confinamiento que sufrimos, fue una experiencia muy, eh, que nos empoderó a todos. Eh, y estos, estos encuentros se suelen realizar cada año para preparar el curso académico que comienza. Aquí tuvimos un espacio magnífico para compartir con todos. Eh, igual que sucede hoy aquí, estamos todos con Paco Citarte, eh, es una oportunidad para hacer contactos, para socializar. Y, y al final eh, lo que vemos es que eh, con ello eh, hemos podido fortalecer la resiliencia que hemos mencionado. Eh, para fortalecernos a nosotros mismos y, y capacitar a, a, a todos a enfrentarnos a, las, a la a la incertidumbre que tendríamos en este año 2021. Y ello también ha contribuido a inspirar y a aumentar la creatividad. And, uh, and basically on, on these two things, the creativity and, and growth mindset, uh, it was very helpful, uh, and I'd, I'd like to mention just a couple of things about uh, growth mindset because we found it very helpful for the artists. Uh, uh, Juliet, you remember also yeah. that, that I mentioned it's in another program that that it was very helpful to understand the moments when we have to 
go further and how to keep the positive attitudes to keep further whatever difficulties we have to face. And this is called growth mindset. It was, in, uh, it was developed by an American uh, uh, scientist, Carol Dweck. Have you heard her name, maybe? No? Okay. But I stop here and I, and I let you translate. Yeah. What was the name again? It is Carol Dweck. Okay. You, can, you can look for her on the... Can you spell, can you spell the name, please? Uh, not not the, the, just the surname. It's Do you D have blank? D-W-E-C-K. Carol Dweck. Retomando estos dos conceptos, la creatividad y eh, un concepto que no he mencionado, eh, la mentalidad de crecimiento, todo ello ha sido eh, necesario y nos ha ayudado bastante para, para entender eh, cuándo debíamos continuar eh, sin importar las dificultades que tuviéramos por el camino. De eso se trata la mentalidad de, de, de crecimiento. Eh, de esta mentalidad hablaba eh, eh, Carol Dweck. Uh, yes, basically, to make it very short, I can understand you. <laughs> very short is that how we react and how we behave in challenging moments. Like, let's see those challenging moments, what we, what we have. What do we think about the skills? What do we have, to, what do we think about when we have a challenging situation? What do we, how do we react when we have to make an effort? Uh, how do we react when we have feedback, and and what what do we think about the setbacks or the let's say the failures? What what happens when we talk about uh, the the failures? And it's very clear that there's a, a a a very sharp contrast between the two types of reactions of the fixed mindset and the growth mindset uh, for all these all these challenging uh, elements. Shall I go on? A little bit, because I, now I'm going to make a uh, distinguishment or the comparison of the two sides. Okay. So you translate yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. ¿Cómo reaccionamos y cómo nos comportamos cuando vivimos eh, momentos desafiantes? Aquí vemos una tabla eh, en la que se comparan dos tipos de mentalidades: la mentalidad fija y la mentalidad de crecimiento. Eh, entonces vamos viendo conforme vamos bajando cómo se reacciona, por ejemplo, cuando a, a raíz de eh, estar con esos desafíos, eh, qué esfuerzo tenemos que poner, eh, cómo reaccionamos cuando recibimos feedback y cómo reaccionamos cuando no logramos nuestros objetivos, cuando fallamos. So, about skills. Very often, maybe you, you think about yourself that, that, okay, let's dance. And you say, oh, no, I'm not a dancer. Yeah, but let's dance, let's move. Oh, no, 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 I'm, 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 I'm not a dancer. I, I've never danced. And immediately, when you have this kind of fixed point of reaction, that, that skills is something that you're born with, and it cannot be changed. It's fixed. It's there. While, when you have a growth mindset, and say, like, okay, let's move, let's dance. All right, <laughs> let's try. I'm very clumsy, but still, I can do something. So that's a, a, a different attitude towards that. Hablando de estas habilidades, por ejemplo, cuando nos dicen vamos a bailar, eh, alguien que tiene una mentalidad eh, fija eh, en la parte roja, pues eh, podría decir, ay no, pero es que yo no bailo, no sé, yo no, es que no, no soy bailarín y ni sé cómo hacerlo. Esta es una reacción fija en, con la que pensamos, vale, para bailar tienes que nacer con ello. Mientras que si tienes una mentalidad de cambio, pues, pues decir, vale, pues vamos a intentarlo. Soy un poco torpe, pero a ver qué sale. When we talk about the challenges, uh, a fixed mindset attitude is very often uh, gives the reaction for challenges that Oh, I don't want to even try because I might be, I might be, uh, it, that might be a failure if I try. And I want to be good. I want to be recognized, and I want to have a, a rate five uh, at the end. So I try to avoid challenges, uh, and and I also give up easily because if I don't see that I'm going to be definitely successful, uh, I don't go for it. 
while we have the growth mindset is that, okay, we have challenges in life. Uh, a challenge is always to get out of the comfort zone. It's always something that we can learn from. And, and, uh, and, and you, can, you can do this consciously and consistently. And, and that's the way of, of growing to, to be better and, and be, be even better. It's, it's not what is important that we don't shoot for the perfect solution, but we shoot for the 1.0 solution, and then we go 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. Okay. Cuando hablamos de los desafíos, eh, esto tiene mucha relación con el concepto de salir de nuestra zona de confort, eh, que es algo que se debe hacer de manera consciente. Eh, lo siento, antes de ello. Eh, Solemos pensar cuando tenemos un desafío, no quiero intentarlo porque es que puedo fallar, me puede salir mal y quiero ser bueno en ello, quiero que me reconozcan mi, eh, mi resultado, mi esfuerzo, quiero sacar un 10, eh, con lo cual si no lo tengo claro, pues voy a evitar enfrentarme a ese desafío. Eh, y por tanto eh, me doy por vencido o vencida muy fácilmente. Porque si no tengo claro que vaya a, a tener éxito, pues no lo voy a hacer. Ni siquiera lo voy a intentar. Mientras que si tenemos una mentalidad de crecimiento, eh, sabemos que esto implica salir de nuestra zona de confort de una manera consciente. Y es ahí donde se produce el cambio hacia una mejor versión de nosotros mismos. Ok. I will speed up and, and let's talk about the three last things. Is effort. It, it's not necessary. It's, it's uh, so, something which is absolutely uh, useless. We don't have to do that. Effort is essential. And this is the one way to, to, to get to mastery, to, to, be good, to be really good in something. Feedback, just coming back to your point in your presentation. Feedback. When we have a fixed mindset, it's, oh my God, I'm going to be judged. This is something, please give me feedback, because that's the way how I can understand how I'm doing it. So that's, that's also a different mindset. And setback is that if something goes wrong, it must be someone else. <laughs> and if, if, uh, if there's a mistake, okay, let's learn from it. Let's see what, 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 were, what are the key points that I can take uh, uh, away from it. And let's take it as a wake-up call. And let's make it better next time. But failure is an option. And this is good. And, and maybe one last sentence. Obviously, when we made this, we found it very important for the uh, training course to our artists to this other adult program that definitely we wanted to highlight and wanted to show the artists that the more they can think on this side, the easier it will be for them to continue, even in the digital space, even in the, in the classroom, even if not going to the classroom one day, or going back to the other day, but to, to face the difficulties, not be afraid of them, learn from them, go further, and become resilient as a result. So that was the main idea uh, of the training course. Yeah, a eh, la parte del esfuerzo, bueno, no, no es muy necesaria eh, explicarla. Sabemos que el esfuerzo es esencial y, y a través del esfuerzo nos convertimos, eh, nos volvemos muy buenos en algo. Eh, con respecto a la parte de feedback, eh, si tengo una mentalidad eh, fija y cerrada, eh, sol, solemos pensar que si algo sale mal, es que es culpa de alguien más, no mía. Mientras que si tengo una mentalidad de crecimiento y, y sale algo mal, pues voy a aprender de ello, ¿no? Eh, también eh, es bastante importante aplicarlo en el programa para adultos porque queremos mostrarle a los artistas que eh, cuanto más estén en la mentalidad de crecimiento, más fácil les va a resultar continuar en esta textura de lo hacemos digital, lo hacemos análogo, esa mezcla de la que hablábamos al principio. Así que eh, el mensaje principal es no tener miedo, aprender siempre de todos los errores, seguir más allá, ir más lejos y finalmente eh, como consecuencia nos haremos más resilientes.
And last but not least, based on these ideas, we started the school year, we launched the school year, we made the new edition uh, in, in springtime, and we discovered that we launched a series of training programs online for the artists, uh, addressing and targeting four different areas that Melissa can tell us. Exactly. Um, so jumping to 2021, springtime, March, again we find ourselves in a similar situation as in 2020, school lockdown in the beginning of March. What do we do with this time? So we definitely had, uh, as, as we saw in the growth mindset, that we cannot be passive, we cannot blame the outside circumstance, we have to stay active and try to do something. To, to maintain the interaction, to maintain the community of artists and, and not abandon the children at this time. So, uh, I go, I go. Yeah? Okay, great. So, uh, we decided to make uh, weekly online sessions for artists where each artist prepared a workshop of 40 minutes all through Zoom or an online platform to train each other. So, uh, the, the key areas of learning that we established as part of this artist training was the first one, uh, to, to develop a program that is fit for uh, training adult, adults training adults. And this is a, a, a key aspect in news anyway, where we, where we work with uh, artists, where we work with educational professionals, teachers, as a way to, to be able to, you know, uh, improve our capacity in, in our training. I let you translate. It's okay. For the last, but not least, what we've added in this primavera, in this course academic, is a series of programs of formation for artists. Porque eh, este marzo de este mismo año nos hemos encontrado en la misma tesitura que el año pasado. Vale, vuelven a cerrar los colegios. ¿Qué hacemos? Tal y como lo hemos visto con la mentalidad de crecimiento, no podemos ser pasivos. Tenemos que pasar a la acción, tenemos que hacer algo y mantener esa, eh, la interacción con los niños. Con lo cual eh, decidimos eh, realizar sesiones semanales para los artistas duraban unos 40 minutos, eh, eran talleres de 40 minutos realizados a través de Zoom y eh, el objetivo era que se formaran los unos a los otros. Eh, lo más importante, eh, al final lo que queremos es, que, eh, es desarrollar un programa en el que los adultos se formen los unos a otros, eh, trabajando con artistas, eh, los profesores mismos y así es como podemos eh, mejorar eh, todas estas capacidades. So that's the first one, to make a program to put into practice the adult training. The second part is that these uh, trainings also serve as an overview of the methodology that we can use when we work with children. When we work with children in the online, in the digital space, as well as in the classroom, and, and kind of compare the, the advantages and the challenges of each of them, and to see what works, what doesn't, what can be adapted. Eh, lo segundo es eh, tener como una vista general de toda la metodología eh, a la hora de trabajar con niños tanto eh, online como presencialmente en clase. Eh, así comparamos eh, las ventajas que ha tenido y los desafíos a los que nos hemos enfrentado. Eh, por lo tanto, así podremos darnos cuenta de lo que ha funcionado y de lo que debe adaptarse. Uh, so that you can understand better what we mean by this. And the, the third one is the sharing expertise. So everybody is, the, is an expert in their own artistic discipline and own artistic form. And while the, the team of artists know about each other and know about you know, who's a dancer, who's, a, who's into theater or drama, we can learn from, even if that's not our discipline, we can learn from each other how they implement you know, their knowledge of, of that art form and maybe be inspired by each other and, and you know, create kind of like a, a full of knowledge. Con respecto a todo el primer punto, vamos a mostrar un vídeo 
Eh, pero quisiera comentar eh, al respecto del tercero. Sharing expertise, eh, compartir nuestra, eh, nuestro conocimiento en lo que somos expertos. Eh, sabemos que todos somos profesionales expertos en nuestra propia materia, eh, pero también se puede aprender de, eh, por ejemplo, gente que baila, gente artista, aunque no sea nuestro campo. ¿Y cómo aprendemos? Pues eh, aprendemos porque nos sentimos inspirados por ellos también. Y el cuarto one, uh, the always recurring theme of how to develop ourselves in using these digital tools. So it's more like the practical knowledge of how to create, create activities that are engaging when we don't have the chance to be in the classroom and physically be with the children. Y el cuarto es un tema bastante recurrente, eh, eh, cómo desarrollarnos a nosotros mismos a la hora de usar estas herramientas digitales, porque eh, lo que tenemos que hacer es crear al final actividades eh, en las que los niños puedan participar cuando no están eh, en clase con nosotros presencialmente. And one more thing in relation to that, also to discover if we do go back to the classroom, how can we maintain or keep using digital tools, or if we are still in lockdown, using digital tools, but also some blended versions to, to have some hands-on and more interactive activities. Y también eh, un apunte al respecto de esto último, eh, si llegado el momento tenemos que volver a clase, pues cómo mantener eh, todo lo que se ha conseguido en, en, en formato digital y si seguimos en, en confinamiento, pues cómo mantenemos una mezcla de, de ambas modalidades. Ok, and now uh, time is up, so <laughs> trying to speed up, but what, uh, to, to close this session, we wanted to give you only a flavor of everything what we, dis what we covered with these online courses, what we organized, uh, following the, the structure what, what Nelly mentioned, and, uh, and maybe do a little bit of interaction together digitally, okay? Right here, in, the, in this space. Yes. Um, <laughs> <pardon? laughs> you said not you. <laughs> you see the fixed mindset? <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm not a digital person. <laughs> That's the first thing you have to overcome. <laughs> anyway, uh, training and dance. I just wanted to show you the atmosphere of such programs. Um, it's a, a, a small video on how it's already part of the training course, how to discover and use the space around yourself. Thank you, Nelly. No sound. Oh, my God. Sound, please. Can you switch that on? Yeah, thank you. Bueno, como se nos ha acabado el tiempo, pues quisiera eh, ir un poquito más rápido y eh, daros una visión muy rápida de lo que eh, hemos conseguido al respecto de lo que comentábamos antes. Eh, en el programa de la formación eh, Formando Adultos, Training Odos, tenemos este vídeo corto que vamos a, que vamos a ver ahora. Uh, uh, yeah. Just one second. Choco chocolate, 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 chocolate. Las abuelas, ¿sí? ¿no? ¿Has visto? Como la abuelita. Yo como soy la abuelita ya. Es que, es que. Okay. Uh, without sound. The first, the first example. Uh, first example is about uh, you had to find out. For example, it was it was pointing uh, mainly on me. Uh, uh, hey, you had to find out what object I have in my hands. Just play with uh, with the distance. Sí, que lleva algo en la mano, pero bueno, no pasa nada porque no tengamos audio, pero eh, sí. Eh, tiene que ordenar que tengo las manos. 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 Tiene que ordenar que teng
The next book, you can do further. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The next video. No, 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 no. Just the next one is about how to follow the hand of your pair. Do the same with your body. You can find the pairs. You can choose just one uh, artist to follow. Yes, yes, yes. You have, we, we were in pairs, and I'm saying that now you can understand who are in pairs. It's coming closer. Going. <laughs> All right. And we can go maybe to the next video. Uh, I go, I go with it. No, you go. <laughs> okay, I do that. I do the thing. Okay. No. Just. Okay. And the next one is that when we work together, we, when we work together with children, how we can show it to the others, how we can go through these methodologies. And I can show you another very short example of that too. For example, how to create rhymes in music, how to play in the rhythm. And she was a tenor. She was a tenor. We started to use Google Forms. Do you know Google Forms? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just look around. Okay, no. I don't show you any uh, anyway. Uh, we, you know, we we started to use Google Forms uh, to really to transmit knowledge. I mean, lexical knowledge mm -hmm. to each other. So that that was that was a, a step. And last but not least, uh, we discovered and we, we, we learned. I mean, we taught and we learned how to even use these digital tools. Zoom, you're familiar with everybody. YouTube Studio. We started to use editing, how to upload, how to make it public, how to share all all these elements. 
Do you know Jamboard? Yes. No. no. Very good one. Some no's we had. No. You have no? No Jamboard? No. no Jamboard? No. Um, when we have a little bit of time later, I, I would be very happy to show you the Jamboard because I, I prepared actually one slide here. Uh, with the Jamboard surface. Os hablaré más adelante de Jamboard porque he preparado algo para mostraros. And what is really nice, I'm, I'm showing to those one who don't know the, the, the Jamboard. I created the Jamboard. This is like a flip chart uh, play. Uh, and what you can do is when you have access to this file, because I just simply do share, and uh, I go to Jamboard and I have the capacitor to Jamboard here on my telephone because it, it's shared also here. So basically, artists can work together on the same flip chart using, uh, I don't know, for example, I use now a pen and I start to, theoretically, I start to draw here. Yes, and you can see that I'm what I'm doing. There. So it's kind of, it's, it's really working together in an easy way. I can find another tool, for example, a laser pointer. I can uh, show things that disappears later. You can see it in a second. So it disappears later. And I can and, and think that we can do it in real time in the same place. And it's really great because we used it as I put in this, uh, I just canceled this, that, that you can really put shapes, pictures, sticky notes, just like I did. Uh, you can change it, you can edit it together, and uh, you can put notes to the others, notes for yourself, and any kind of description that you want. And for example, this platform is what we used for the, uh, for the video series, that every episode had one Jamboard slide, and we had all the videos in one working session. So, so we could have the, the input uh, from each of us. And last but not least, do you know Mentimeter? No. 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 And you are not digital, come on. La idea de Jamboard eh, es que eh, tenemos un, un documento que se puede compartir con otras personas, entonces podemos colaborar eh, todos. Okay. A mí no me da tiempo, necesito tres vidas para hacer todo eso. Okay, and Mentimeter, uh, this is the surface where I'm presenting from. Why I really love it, because we prepared it uh, partially in Budapest, partially uh, as, uh, in Germany, uh, and now everything is online, so I don't have uh, to use the stick, but, but everything goes online. And uh, for, now I, I invite you for some interaction with the Mentimeter, it's going to be very easy. Uh, please, go to your telephone. This is the last exercise and then we finish. Uh, what, you, what you have to do is that you type, go to your browser. Oh, sorry, for the QR code. Yes. You go here, www.menti.com. Okay? One. So you type menti.com. You arrive there. And you put this code here. Okay. And I already have two hearts here. You see? Two of you already. Yes, three. One cat. Very nice. <laughs> You're fast. Three, two, two. <laughs> You're changing, huh? <laughs> Very nice. So you, can, so you can see every result. Appearing immediately in real time. Four cats and three hearts. <laughs> and one thumb, two thumbs, two hearts. Okay. This is this is this happens because you change the the emoji. And when, when you change you go to another one. But it's nice. It's, I really love this spirit of <laughs> interaction. Okay. 
So, so many of you now have in. I just don't want to lose too much more time. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And this is something that, that was very interesting or important to, that we can use for. Is that when you go to your next slide, who's ever in the digital space? Now we are very curious to have your answers. Make your votes. You see? Ah. <laughs> okay. Blended approach. That's what we call to. We have five answers, eight answers. Oh! We are in the 21st century. It's only that one. Music is in the classroom. Four. Eleven. Very good. All right, we have 11 answers from you, from this group, real-time sound. Or 12 already. And this is already a very good thermometer that we can understand. That basically, we have a growth mindset, and we don't want to stick here, and we say, okay, or we go, let's go digital, or we say, let's find a way, or the blended version, of using the digital and the analog resources and let's make it happen in the best way possible and thank you very much for your i mean if you want to you want to play for the last one okay how do you feel put an adjective okay, thank you bien eh, estamos en el siglo XXI o bien necesitamos un, un enfoque mixto muy poca gente ha votado que no se solo debe existir en, en clase y bueno, muchas gracias por vuestra atención no sé si tendréis alguna pregunta o si queréis hacer otro juego sí, jugar si you put adjectives Adjectives, how you feel? Good, bad, inspired, uh, even in Spanish it's fine. Happy, that's nice. Analog, digitalized, art, both, happy, hola. <laughs> Good, both. This is all about you, what, what you see now. This is what you're doing now here. <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> we have already eight answers. Maybe <laughs> if you want to put some more in. Sí, está, sería una parte. Good. Ah, one more. Still happy? Still digitalized? Cool. Cool. Hyper cool. And thank you very, very much for your kind attention.